All right, we are doing this. In Mandarin Chinese, the word America directly translates to beautiful country. Over the span of one short year, we confirmed that our home country is indeed beautiful. But we also discovered that the United States has far more to offer than we originally imagined. I'm Chad. And I'm Claire. And we lived, worked, and traveled together full time in a tiny self-converted Ford Transit Connect for an entire year. A lot of people thought we were out of our minds. Every now and then we would be parked somewhere and someone would come up to our van asking Chad who would typically be outside for a van tour. I would then pop my head out of the van to greet them and they would always be in shock that there was another person living in there as well. I think the most asked question in regards to everything that happened over the last year is why. Why would you strip yourselves of modern day comfort? Why would you want to live without financial stability why would you want to confine yourselves to such a small space? And the more we were asked why, the more we began asking ourselves the same question over and over again. Why are we doing this? Before moving into the van, we knew why we decided to do this. We were undergoing the typical quarter life crisis, wondering what all we wanted to do with our lives. We were faced with the morbid reality of not knowing when our time on Earth would come to an end. If we were lucky, we'd get 80 more years, but because of life's constant mystery, there's always a chance that perhaps we'd only have two weeks to live out our lives. We decided that there's no better time to live than in the present, causing us both to sit down and think thoroughly about our life values. World travel and the desire to experience food, people, and places were high up on our list, and with college graduation just around the corner and a fair amount of savings in our bank account, we knew there wouldn't be any better time to take the leap. So that's why we originally decided to do this, but with most things in life, once you're living out your decision and making it a reality, new questions and thoughts of purpose reveal themselves. Upon hitting the road, weeks would pass by and we would be staring at each other between the walls of our little van doing the same routine every single day. The budget lifestyle we chose was rather difficult to keep up with, and it wasn't just about traveling, it was about surviving. So we are on our first day of our trip. Using my emergency body, I've actually loved using it. Using the funnel is actually, like it just makes you realize how easy it is to use the restroom when you're just in a house or in a facility. And you know, those were things that I took for granted earlier. I would far prefer to use our funnel. <laughs> We made a little clothesline because we washed clothes before leaving. We are going to do laundry. <laughs> and we have to use up because we ran out of ice. We showered outside of the van in the cold. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's refreshing. It's always worth um, showering outside, even though it's freezing. You're okay. You're okay. I promise. Here comes the shampoo. Where's the shampoo? It's all right here on the back of your head. That's not enough. Give it to me, my hand. That's it? That's a lot. Give me more soap. My hair is so dirty. There's no bubbles. Oh, it feels amazing. It's gonna take a while. It's gonna take forever. My thumb's gonna go numb. Being in San Francisco and everyone telling us that our car is gonna be broken into if we like leave our van at all was really, really scary. Be okay. Oh, look at the back of the van! <laughs> well, this is the roughest road we've ever been on. How did that happen? We needed to constantly find free water, pinpoint free parking spots, locate cheap gas, fill up the cooler with just enough ice and food so that it'd be enough to eat, but not too much that it'd go bad. And then of course, the most obvious part of any road trip, we needed to constantly drive, 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 endlessly drive for an entire year. The action of living everyday life inevitably brings repetition somewhere. And although our repetition wasn't found in a stationary house or job, it was found in our daily van chores, in our desire to document every moment, and in our feelings towards our new lifestyle. With most things in life, situations are bittersweet. We had this grand and wonderful opportunity to go out and venture the entire United States, and while most moments were filled with pure joy and awe, 
we would be lying if we didn't mention that there were also a handful of moments of feeling fearful, overwhelmed, and unbelievably tired. <laughs> How's your nap? Grand. I was trying so hard to stay awake, and I couldn't. It was the same fear that our overnight parking spot wasn't secure and that a police officer might knock. The same need to go outside to finally be able to stand up and stretch and the same push for self-motivation to film, edit, and upload videos for an audience that wasn't there. So we asked ourselves, why were we doing this? And the answer to that question wasn't all that simple. Hot. It is so, so hot and so humid, and I have the hiccups for no reason. There's so many bugs flying around my head. Can't see them. I think it's because I'm stinky. I got bit by a mystery bug, and now I have this bulbous cankle. Very, very cute. Oh, look at all these. That's beautiful. I'm gonna get a slow-mo of my arm. No, I just wanna show them. It's so bad. <laughs> it's okay. Little update, I got stung by a bee on this finger, but it's okay. Swarmed by tons of bugs yesterday and having over like a hundred bug bites. And I will say, it's probably like the number one of the downsides of our current man life. Sitting there, we're like, wow, the clouds look so cool. And then, of course, it starts downpouring. We're attempting to get some water right now, and there are literally bees swarming like everywhere. <laughs> this whole thing was full, and it flooded our entire van. The start of our road trip wasn't the easiest takeoff. We had left in the late summer of 2020, and the bugs, heat, and humidity were joining us each day on the East Coast. It seemed like every night we were laying on a damp bed, covered in bug bites, asking each other if we were still having a good time. Those nights would often end with us laughing deliriously at our problems and feeling grateful that we survived to see another day. We always ended up reminding ourselves that living in a tiny van for us was a desire and a choice in which we made ourselves and not an unforeseen circumstance that was a last resort. And that being said, we felt thankful to have a roof over our heads and some food in our cooler. The why, at that point, became seeing how far we could be pushed out of our comfort zones, and how we could work together to make this experience the best it could be. Because of the poor circumstances our journey began with, we realized early on that this trip would only be a happy success if we moved forward with a positive mindset and an endless amount of patience and gratitude. Once we started seeing things with more optimism, our life in the van took a sharp turn for the better. We saw the endless sweating as a healthy way to remove unwanted toxins from our bodies, and we invested in a little citronella candle that helped keep biting bugs away. Soon after, the weather started to cool down and the leaves started to change color. We were welcomed into a world of warm colors and harvest, and that was when we witnessed the longest and most vibrant autumn we've ever seen. We started to get into the rhythm of things, feeling more and more comfortable living in the van and also being in front of a camera. We made tremendous strides in our marriage and discovered what it meant for us to work together as an equal team. We felt like kids again, constantly in awe of everything we saw and the why disappeared into the background. Turns out, when you're focused on doing the things that make you happy, the why doesn't really matter anymore. We began to adore and cherish the little things that came with living in the van, like shaking out the sheets every morning and watching the dust sparkle in the sunlight, or listening to the pitter-patter of rainfall on our van roof as we fell asleep. Those moments became very special, and the more we searched for those happy little things, the more we found. We started to realize that physical belongings weren't the things bringing smiles to our faces, but it was instead small moments and memories that truly made us feel alive. And we carry that closely with us as we finish up the first leg of our road trip. After a quick break at our home bases, enjoying the basic conveniences of modern life, we hopped back into our humble abode knowing that this time we would be straying rather far from home and for a much longer time. Once we left our home base, we began to feel a bit overwhelmed as we had plans to hit all 50 states, and we still had 30 left to visit in the short span of six and a half months. 
we ended up making the tough decision to shorten our route so that we could better experience the places that we could fit into the second half of our trip. And with that weight lifted off our shoulders, we proceeded forward into the endless winter. We had a new challenge to overcome in 2021, and that was to simply survive amongst the cold. The East Coast summer relentlessly tested our endurance with heat and biting insects, and it was now time for the Southwest winter to evaluate our tolerance with an unforeseeable end of cold, dry, and windy weather. The question of why re-entered our lives as we wobbled around with numb feet, flaking skin, and the useless warmth of our entire wardrobes. We felt cold in every sense of the word. I am currently wearing one, two, three shirts, a puffer jacket, about to put on a raincoat, gonna wear a scarf. Also got my hat on. I have winter leggings under here, pair of pants, really thick socks, and this is all for a hike. And if you think I'm being drastic, Chad has underwear, long underwear, and two full pants on. I can't do it. And two pairs of socks. Jeez, I need to step up my game. Yeah. It is really, really, really cold. It is freezing outside, so we're both like bundling up like crazy. It is snowing in Albuquerque. Woo! Look at that. Got a nice little inch on the van. <laughs> you know, in Beauty and the Beast, how <laughs> everyone turned into some sort of like household object. <laughs> this would be Chad. <laughs> I think tonight is the hotel night. It's gonna be three degrees tonight. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> wow, you've never done that so fast. <laughs> to wipe the windshield and it is not working. Uh, it might be on the outside, Chad. It might be on the outside. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of you guys have messaged me asking how we're doing in the cold. This is how we're doing. <laughs> Hot chocolate. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't wait. Oh no, it froze. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wonderful. Clara is officially trying to roast me like a weenie. <laughs> he kept saying to add more wood, so I did. And now we are freezing. By golly, it's gonna be a cold one. This morning we woke up and it was snowing and it was a little windy and we were like, oh, that's cute. That's very nice. But now it's like really snowing and we might have to actually change our plans for today. We woke up to a lot of frost and it's actually really hard to open the doors. Cooking became extremely difficult as food wouldn't heat up and washing dishes ensured in freezing numb hands in just seconds. The sun would set early, causing the days to be wildly short, and we would find ourselves shivering in our sleeping bags at 6 p.m., dreaming of a nice hot shower. We debated back and forth about getting a small propane heater for the van, but the conversation would always end with us adding a couple more layers and snuggling up close in our tiny bed. And that was when we had to, once again, remind ourselves to practice gratitude and to cherish the little things. The Southwest made that so easy for us as it's such an enchanting part of the United States. And what made it all the more special was that we got to see it with a marvelous coat of sparkling snow. We got to see stars, canyons, deserts, cities, hot springs, and with the days so packed, we became tired enough at night that the cold didn't bother us anymore. And then came California, a magical place with perfect weather and extraordinary views in exchange for very high prices. This was the first time we feared for our tight budget and with gas prices higher than Chad's blood pressure, the sassy woman emoji in my budgeting app became very critical. But nonetheless, the warm weather and astounding coastal views had us feeling like we were living the unattainable van life portrayed across social media. We would open our back doors to stunning backdrops of seagulls soaring into the horizon or to bright yellow fields of blooming wildflowers swaying in the wind. This was the absolute pinnacle of what we expected our road trip to be, and a pinnacle it was indeed. With 
all the good weather we were blessed with, I became extremely excited to cook each day as conditions were pristine. I began to experiment with more meals and would have fun documenting the journey with a couple of cooking montages in each video. Speaking of the videos, we began to get more traction and our community began to blossom in so many positive ways. We started to see more purpose in creating these videos beyond just documenting our adventure for ourselves and for our family. We now had an audience from around the world who wanted to be a part of our journey and we felt so honored to be able to share our daily lives with so many others. We ended our time in California on a pretty high note and with that we drove back east to avoid the rainy springtime of the northwest. At this point, we were hitting national parks back to back and honestly, we were feeling a little nervous about making videos for an audience that had doubled over the span of a month. But what made it so much easier is that we were visiting some of the most iconic spots in the United States and everything we saw was wondrous and truly worth sharing. essentially professionals at maximizing life out of this tiny vehicle. We knew how to find free overnight parking spots in just minutes, and we knew our way through Walmarts like no one else. Any obstacles that came our way was fixed almost immediately, and we enjoyed weeks of simple and exciting bliss. Once we finished up in Colorado, it was time to pivot back to the coast to check off the Pacific Northwest. Life seemed easy and surreal. Most mornings we woke up not believing that we were traveling for a living and that our dream had truly become our reality. We had overcome so many obstacles to finally feel that satisfaction and we felt proud for making it that far. It was during this time that I announced that I would be producing a digital cookbook and that I'd be completing it within a month. So between each happy moment out hiking, filming, and exploring were late nights writing and designing an entire cookbook from scratch. I never imagined myself writing a cookbook, especially at the age of 22, but that journey alone taught me so much about myself and what I'm capable of doing. I poured hours of my heart and soul into making a collection of on-the-road recipes, and the final product was everything I wanted it to be and more. I was finally able to share a piece, or should I say, a taste, of our road trip with people all over the world. I was so excited to be able to connect with others through a culinary language, and the photos of your recreations were such a gift to receive and see. Once Claire completed her cookbook, we knew we only had four more states to explore, and we tried our best to not take those last months for granted. It had been one heck of a ride thus far, and although it was a very bittersweet journey, it was sad to see the road trip coming to an end. We got to enjoy the golden beauty of the Pacific Coast one last time while we were in Oregon and Washington, and then came the rain. It had been a very long time since we were greeted with multiple days of rain, and although we were happy to see our rain guards living up to their full potential, we started to get an itch to return home. The rain brought a lot of difficulty, two big issues being that our solar panel no longer collected energy for a battery, and that everything, and I mean everything, was either wet or damp. Because we were so close to the finish line, we kept joking about going home early as we had been living in our tiny little van for 11 months. But we decided that, you know, since we made it that far, there was really no point of giving up then. We finished up our final two states feeling both sad and happy as we watched our final campfire fade, our final hike come to an end, and our final camp stove meal served to our flip out table. We began reflecting on an entire year of memories, and it's a good thing we documented every moment of it because we experienced more than our little minds could ever remember. We filmed countless videos. Hello and welcome. Hello, hello. Hello, guys. We ate so many camp stove meals. We parked in a lot of different places. We hiked to infinite destinations. We stayed with incredible people. We built an amazing community. 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 people. We felt hot, we felt cold, we felt dry, we felt wet, we felt dirty, we felt clean, we felt small, we felt big. We felt just about everything in between. But most importantly, 
we felt alive. We felt more comfortable living in the van than we ever had, but there's something about feeling so comfortable that encourages you to get back out of your comfort zone and try something new. Our road trip had come to an end, but an end only means one thing, and it's truly a fantastic thing. It means there's about to be a beginning, and knowing that the beginning to our next chapter was just around the corner made saying goodbye to the van easier than ever. So we just got back and we've already cleared out the entire van. It is looking bigger than it ever has. And we're about to vacuum because we spilled oats like a few months ago and it's just been like this the whole time. Vacuum time. So I just finished vacuuming the entire van nice and clean all the oats are gone and also we've cleared everything out and it just looks so spacious honestly and the overhead is unloaded no more clothes under the bed my kitchen it's empty no more spices all right time to wipe it down Right, we have emptied out the van and I'm now going to take out the prayer flags. A iconic moment. I have been cleaning up the stove and it is just so gross. It's crazy, we had all of this stuff in the van and I just did a load that's filled to the brim. The van is small but it holds a lot. Today we are washing the van. It's super, super dirty right now, and I'm just really glad to get that whole ombre off. <laughs> we emptied out our little one-year home and prepared Deer Rover for his next owner. Although keeping the van would have been cool, we didn't feel right letting our incredible adventure mobile sit in a garage for years and years while we traveled internationally. Rover is meant for the road, and it only seemed fit that he'd go off on another USA road trip with another excited traveler. He gave us an unforgettable year and we will fall asleep happy each night knowing that he's being enjoyed by someone else. Thank you to each and every one of you for gifting us your time this past year and for cheering us on through the ups and downs. One of the greatest things we learned this past year is that time is a gift. Having you all along on the journey, gifting us your time and kind words is truly priceless and the grandest present we could ever receive. What we're doing wouldn't be possible without you all, so thank you. From the very bottom of our hearts, we want to encourage you to get out there and pursue something you're genuinely passionate about. Time is indeed a gift, but it isn't always guaranteed. Therefore, there is no better time to be with the people you love and to do what makes you happy. With a very joyous end to chapter one in the van comes chapter two. We are packing our bags for the next big adventure and this time with a passport in our hands and a carry-on suitcase by our sides. We hope to have you along on the next roller coaster as we start all over again and tackle full-time international travel. And who knows, maybe we'll see a couple of you guys along the way. 
Stay safe, live now, and cherish the little things. Wishing you all the very best from now, somewhere in the world, Chad and Claire.